Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Make it make sense. <coughs> well, we're going to try to. We are sure going to try to. But thank you for coming over to my YouTube channel. Something that I like to say is my house, my home. And I'm inviting you all in to uh, discuss or chit chat a while. Okay, that's my channel I'm on now. Make sure you have, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, okay? We're trying to grow, all right? And if with you coming over every time I uh, leave the light on for you all, and y'all come on in and see what I got cooking, don't y'all think I deserve a, um, a, a like, share, view, <clears throat> and a subscription? And all of it don't cost you nothing. But I'm only asking for you to subscribe to the channel. That's it. That's all. Okay? But, yes, I have another channel as well, my main channel. And it's called Deb Chanel's 40s World, which is coming up in a few minutes. Okay? That was my original channel I started on. And I feel I'm doing pretty well over there. I do the same thing. Just a little bit more <laughs> fine-tuned. Okay? But those both are my channels, and I want you all to go and subscribe to each one of them. Okay? Now, we're going to get into, uh, does anybody look at Love and Hip Hop anymore? Just let me know. Do anybody look at the franchise of Love and Hip Hop? Now, we happen to have the one for Atlanta, which was founded when you had Kate Michelle on it. You had Jocelyn Hernandez, you had Mimi, and Mimi sometimes come in and give a little something, something, but she has a storyline with Stevie J. I still got to do a video on Stevie J and uh, Faith Evans divorcing, okay, and she get a, and she's supposed to get that boy, and I say boy, okay, um, one million dollars. I'm like, what? what? Somebody got screwed or somebody's keeping some secrets, Okay, they paying somebody to keep some secrets because I can't see Jane, I mean, um, Stevie walking out of a relationship with no one million dollars. I just can't see it. Um, but anyway, we're gonna talk about uh, Squirrel Scrappy. We're gonna talk about Little Scrappy and his conversation he was having very loudly with the world. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say Erica Mena, okay? She was up there, and Bambi told her not to start no shit with Scrappy. That's what she did. She said, don't stop. You know, that made sense, okay? But when she did what, which was the opposite of what she told Bambi she wasn't going to do, that's where all the uh, hell went. And it started with the four else. I like to call the fakery, the foolishness, the fraudulent, and the fuckery things going on and scrap could definitely um probably agree with me because one thing you don't talk about and you know even when you get in a situation somebody talk about your mama they talk about your kids they talk about you you know what i'm saying you still supposed to say cool because they don't know you to the fact that they know about your mama and her comments and goings they know about your children and how things are being uh, you know, we as parents are doing uh, good or bad by them. You, they don't know us. So why do we always get that, um, the anxiety builds up and you just want to blow, blow up on that person? You know what I'm saying? They don't know your family. You know, they've never broken bread with you in your home. But yet, that's still, that, and when we were kids, we like, oh, you're going to talk about nobody in my family. Definitely ain't going to talk about my mom and my dad or any of my sisters or brothers, you know. But those are just words. Words can hurt depending on what scene of life you're in, you know, where you're trying to go and all of that. They can hurt. But nine times out of ten when y'all just argue and carry on. Because, see, you hit somebody at our age, you going to jail. You going in for assault and battery. All right? Nothing new, nothing old. It's all placed the same. So, no, grown folks that got sense, they ain't got time to be putting their hands on nobody, okay? Unless you're trying to invade their space and you hit first or you come and you break in their house and they got the gun, you know what I'm saying? And they pointing it right at you. Then those decisions are made. Do I shoot you? Do I maim you? 
meaning, you know, break a bone here and there? Or do I just let you sit there tied up until the cops come? Or what? Blow your brains out? Either or, you know, it, the things be running through your mind. Then you have to think about your children, your your family, your job. All those things play a, uh, a good penny uh, towards the bank account when you want to make decisions like that. Where they can come back and sue you for whatever. But, um, yeah, that's funny. But Scrappy and Erica get in it when Erica says he don't pay child support and got po um a uh, little scrappy up there st- stuttering. Okay, tell me he got receipts. He got real uh, 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 receipts. I was like, wait a minute, uh, are you what you drinking, honey? What are you drinking? Cause you're not coming out legible. Okay, it's not coming out legible. But let's get into the uh video. I mean, not the video, but the audio, and see what we can come up with. Okay. Now see mama D ain't have to come in there and say all that, but I'm telling you, she is too funny. Talking about somebody running a muck in the palace. She got to get them uh, taken care of. Now she's saying uh, she know for a fact that uh, Scrappy ex-wife does witchcraft. <laughs> Not saying it ain't true, but it's just how she said it. Okay, let's go on back into the audio. Yes, I got the bank statements. I got bank yes. statements. Now, see, the reason I'm doing this to air. You see how she, I, 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 I got, I, I'm like, scrap it. Did she hit on something that struck a nerve with you, honey? Did she hit on something that struck a nerve with you? Are you really paying child support? But let's go on back to the article. I meant the article, the audio. It's typical bad bitch scrappy fashion. He wants to go low and bring up my child to deflect, you know, his disgusting decisions. And to tell you the truth, I don't know why Erica Mena got on the table, y'all. She got on the table and scrap it and scrap it. Uh, <laughs> fashion, he got up on the table too. Now, w- do I think he was gonna hit Erica Mena? No, but he wanted to give her the smoke that she wanted, he- and he felt she deserved because he went back and down. Now, it's only a few men that can do that, and we'll give them a pass, okay? We'll give them a pass because they, you know, he's acting kind of feminine in a way, but he was just a guy trying to. Act like a female. How they want to be talking, talking, talking. How they want to follow somebody when they're arguing and things of that nature. That's what I was talking about. And whoever was tugging on him, he was going to get a. He, he was going to get in a fight with them because <laughs> they were men. You know what I'm saying? They it was a man on man thing. But um, Erica, come in, Jay. Erica shouldn't not not Erica. Yeah, Erica Miller. Yeah. She shouldn't have started something that she knew Scrappy was going to finish, okay? Because I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No, Scrappy ain't following her. If she would, if she would dive in the ocean, Scrappy would dive in the ocean. If she would go up in the, uh, the mountains, Scrappy would go up in the mountains. He's that type of guy. He is going to go toe-to-toe with you. He's not going to hit you. And one thing I don't believe is that he hit on women. Uh, unless somebody can correct me, he could get mad as a tea kettle spurring over, okay? But I don't think he would do that. 
That's just me. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, what y'all thought about this situation with Scrappy getting into it with Erica Menham? I mean, like I said, I haven't watched Love and Hip Hop Atlanta in so long. I think when it first started, I watched maybe four seasons. And then it was like, "Mm mm-mm, I can't. They got too much going on. And the storylines are so manufactured. It's like no reality TV is supposed to be just that. We want to hear bill collectors call you. We want to hear you say, well, which bill are we going to pay? Well, I'm going to pay. And the rest of them just going to have to wait till another day. We want to hear, damn, we got to go to the grocery store. We ain't got shit up in this house because we ate it throughout the week. You know, things of that nature. We want to see the the whole person in its totality. We don't want no manufactured stuff. Because I'm pretty sure Mona probably told Erica Mena, okay, what you going to talk about? See who you can get uh, a rise out of because we need those ratings to, you know, be good for this quarter or something to that degree. That's what I thought. I'm not saying that's what they went and discussed and put it in the playbook for them to execute. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying with any reality, um, what do you call it, show, there's going to be your favorites. They're going to be your not-so-favorites that the fans or the bloggers or the people that's watching the show is going to rate them. It just is what it is. We go to what well, what attracts us is someone that we can be relatable to. So that's how people tend to be on this side or that side or with this person or with that person because they can identify uh, the traits, the qualities, the characteristics that this person gives off okay me personally and i ain't got nothing wrong with the girls of atlanta i don't want to see none of them back okay get get a whole new crew because i think everybody's pretty much even the newbies have been on it at least three years i'm thinking except for sanya and uh monietta i'm still trying to figure out how monietta get a peach is she a peach holder y'all is she still a friend I forget because I really don't get into the show anymore because I think I watched, oh, maybe I haven't watched the last, ooh, if it's season 15, I think I watched it periodically uh, on season five or six. I think I stopped being interested in it because You could tell when something was going to happen. You know, it was just that scripted. And it shouldn't have been that scripted because you're still having people that don't know how to read lines. They're not true actors or actresses. They're just going on off their emotions on what you gave them. And they're going to try to mimic it in form. Um, But I was like, when are we going to learn? People can talk about our kids, our mother, our dad. Uh, siblings, just as long as you don't put your hands on them. That's when you're going to really feel the heat and the pressure how y'all be saying out in them streets, okay? But that's all I got. I ain't got no more for this video. So please, maybe, please, please, please share, like, and comment, and definitely subscribe, all right? Bye-bye.